Hi guys. Oh, it just turned into a pleasant day here after all. This is the first cop I have seen with someone pulled over since I left Ithaca, New York, and he's got him an 18 whaler. That never happens. But uh, anyway, it is now, we have made it to Thursday 11-11-2021. We want to say happy birthday to the uh, artist formerly known as Osama Number 5. Happy birthday, brother. I guess this is Veterans Day, whatever that means. Uh, anyway, we have just rolled in to the great state of South Carolina. That's where the little dog and I just left the traffic jam of uh, the traffic jam of Charlotte, North Carolina. Probably put us into Columbia, South Carolina at uh, the height of five o'clock traffic. Good God almighty. Getting to Augusta, Georgia states today. We're going to start out in North Carolina, end up in Georgia. These leaves are still just beautiful. This has just been a gorgeous fall. I, you know, being a snowbird, you get to have fall two or three times, and then you get to have spring two or three times. So I have really been enjoying these gorgeous leaves all the way down I've been staying with my normie friends, the my token normies, I call them, uh, <laughs> for the past couple of nights, doing normie things. You know, just being normies, just, uh, just, you know, it's just another day on the planet. Uh, we were out, I don't know, chainsawing dead trees and planting bushes and uh, going out to restaurants and bars and uh, you know the things that normies do and if I had uh, not opened up uh, and I barely did uh, if I had never opened the, the you know even the mainstream media news since I left Ithaca New York however many days ago you know, guys, it's just another week on the planet. A beautiful week, as a matter of fact. Uh, here in, uh, heading into mid-November. Where is the temperature? It is 75 degrees. 75 degrees right now. Uh, in South Carolina in mid-November. There's these beautiful leaves. I have no idea. There's some goddamn myth about uh, some sort of truck driver shortage or something. Uh, I, I see exact. Here is another cop. Good God, this is the second cop in South Carolina. I'm about five miles into South Carolina. I have already seen more cops than since I left New York. In the first five minutes of South Carolina, I'm going to be watching the speed limit here, although people continue to pass right by me. So uh, I forgot once again my train of thought has been derailed by the police state. Uh, yeah, just, you know, just going along, just living the normie life as this. Uh, I was actually visiting a female friend that I met in St. Croix six years ago, and she has a new boyfriend. He is a lawyer. He is a southern lawyer, and uh, when she was out of earsight, the, the guy did not want me anywhere around. You can tell that the guy is really getting uh, being a southern gentleman uh, to the test whenever I show up at his house. It's actually her house. It's not his, 
which I'm sure uh, is part of the reason that he grudgingly agrees to let me visit for a couple of days. Uh, when she was uh, out of earsight, out of earshot, uh, his question to me was, why do you do, why do you do what you do? That was his question to me, and I said, what? I said, are you referring to my, uh, what I do on YouTube? And, and he said yes, and uh, of course he confirmed he had never heard one of my uh, videos. And, uh, you know, I was just trying to explain to this man, this uh, educated uh they're very left-leaning. Uh, this educated attorney in North Carolina, Durham, North Carolina, uh, that I just find, he, he, I, I just find the collapse of a planet and the imminent extinction of every being that lives on this planet, including the human race. I said, I just find it an interesting story and uh, his response to that he kind of nodded vaguely and he just said I don't believe it that's what he said I, I don't believe it he chooses not to believe it he goes I do not dwell on the negative that's what he told me he does not dwell on the negative and he just simply does not believe that uh, that the world's going to hell in a handbasket. And we got into the conversation. You know, he's a very successful attorney. He, he's pretty much wrapping up his career in law. Uh, I think he's on his very last case. Uh, and then he's getting ready to retire. Um, but for the second time in a week I had the same conversation in uh, the same conversation basically the same conversation in Charlottesville with a uh, friend of Osama's uh, and, and the conversation you know without going into specific details of each one of them it, it, the, the gist of the conversation, and obviously I have had this conversation many times, particularly over, you know, since I became a doomer, is, is about money and just uh, essentially talking about that obviously I could be making more money than I am making, that I do not, uh, you know, have to be living in a little uh, tumble-down shack on the side of the road on a floodplain in New York, living out of a 16-foot camper uh, at the end of a rutted-out dirt road in the Point Lonesome Swamp and, and whatnot. And, and both of these men, I, I, I mean, they, they weren't picking a fight with me. I, I, I don't, I, I think they were genuinely interested. Uh, I, it's like they were imparting some wisdom to me, as if I did not realize this, that uh, there's, there's several ways that I could be making money right now that I am choosing not to. Now the fellow, it, Charlottesville, he was particularly into this bullshit Bitcoin. And, uh, and the fellow here is more into the stock market. And, uh, and, 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 and as I told both of them, I don't care that, let's say, whether it's Bitcoin or the stock market or anything with the possible exception of real estate. Uh, I, I said it just bores the living shit out of me. I, I have zero interest on any level getting into Bitcoin 
uh, any other of these cryptocurrencies, uh, investing in the stock market, uh, it, it, any of this crap. I, I, you know, I'm 62 years old. I have never in my entire life put one penny into the stock market uh, and sure as shit not in crypto. Now we all know the uh, story of my one investment into precious metals, how that one ended. The one time I veered away from uh, investing my money into real estate and put it into precious metals. Uh, we, 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 <laughs> we don't need to rehash that one. Uh, but not counting that little aberration, uh, you know, since I was, thir I, I made my first real estate investment when I was 30 years old and this place in Florida, which I'm getting ready to sell, is the 22nd uh, piece of real estate I have bought in my life. So I've owned 20, right now I own two pieces soon I will be back down to 21 but as I was trying to you know explain to both of these men who, who I guess had my best interest at heart by, uh, by, by letting me know that uh, I could be making more money uh, without working too hard and, and, and this certainly goes with my real estate agent friends in Austin Texas trying to get me uh, to come back to Austin and spend one year, one year, uh, you know, in the real estate market in Austin, Texas, where I could pick up 200, they, without working that hard, uh, I could make $200,000 uh, in the year 2022 in the uh, Austin real estate market. Uh, if that was my desire, but as I was explaining to these two fellows uh, who don't have much into real estate, that even when I was a, a, a real estate house flipper for the 20 houses, the 20 properties that I flipped, a, a, as bullshit as this sounds, Making the money was was not uh, was not my only goal. All right, now it, it was probably my primary goal, and I'm not going to sit here and act like uh, I bought 20, flipped 20 properties with, with no uh, hope of making any money, uh, and I made damn good money. Uh, on my uh, in my real estate investing career, I have a goddamn good lifetime track record. But uh, as I was explaining to these fellows, it, it, real estate there's a huge fucking difference between Bitcoin and the stock market and precious metals and all of this stuff. Is that with a piece of real estate? You know what I'm. You can go out there. You can hang out on it. You know, depending on what it is, you can uh, you can go camping there. You can put a garden down. You you can go out there and create a vision. Uh, most of the work I do in my real estate investments is you know with the property. I ha I don't have much more interest in the actual houses that I buy than I do in Bitcoin or the stock market. It's all about. Uh, the property. I love digging in the dirt and, you know, and, and uh, taking, a, you know, a junk strewn, weed strewn uh, piece of property, cleaning it up and, uh, and having some fun out there. You know, making something beautiful out of, uh, out of something ugly and making a few dollars along the way. It's just, uh, all of this other shit, any quote investment other than real estate, it, it, it just bores the living shit out of me. Uh, and and the, the knowledge that I could, uh, that, that I could take this money 
that I'm getting, a, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to sell this place in Florida for $35,000, that I could take this $35,000 and put it, I don't know, in some sort of fucking cryptocurrency or the stock market or whatever and, and probably make more money uh, than, than putting it uh, in, into real estate. I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm 62 years old, uh, I am far from rich, uh, but you know, every year that I get older, and certainly since I've become a doomer, uh, every year it makes less and less and less difference. You know, fucking money, I'm, I'm not acting like that I don't like money. If anybody uh, who wants to send me $50,000, I will gladly take it. Uh, but it's, it's the, the lure of money uh, at this point, both in my life and uh, in the state of the planet, you know, global industrial society and the planet, just this, this normie pursuit of money. It's, it's just getting, it's getting more and more pointless every year. Obviously, you need to fucking eat. Uh, what do I need to do? I, I, I need to eat and I need to keep this gas sucking truck rolling. That is, uh, that's where my money goes to. Uh, but, you know, the, the pursuit of money, to, just to buy this fucking stuff. I have one, I, I have somewhere around 10 or 15% of the stuff that I had in my life uh, in the year 2008. I, I have gotten rid of 85 to 90% of this worthless planet eating just this shit, this pointless, worthless shit. I've, I've gotten rid of uh, 85 to 90 percent of this bullshit out of my life, and I still have too much of this shit. Uh, I, I could get rid, uh, 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 you know, of the 10 or 15 percent I have left, I could easily get rid of 50 percent uh, uh, of this pointless, useless shit that I own now, and it would barely affect my life. Uh, it would barely affect my life. And uh, I, I, I just don't get it, and I, and I have nothing but pity for these people. I was just listening, what gave me the impetus for this rant is uh, this song by Greg Brown. It's about being a bum, I guess. What it is, it's, uh, I can't remember it. Great song by Greg Brown. But what it is, is about panicking when you feel like that you're going to lose your stuff and your money. That, uh, that this absolute panic that people go into when it is suggested that they're going to let go of this shit, that this pointless fucking shit uh, in their lives. Uh, that, that, that adds, well, next to nothing to their happiness. Uh, and, and I'm not even talking about hoarders necessarily. Uh, I'm, I'm just talking about, quote, average people who wouldn't even be considered hoarders. Just this crap uh, that, that we're dragging around with us uh, in our lives, dragging us down and loading us down and, uh, you know, figuring out where the fuck uh, we're going to put this stuff, uh, how we're going to move this stuff from one spot to the next spot. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. So I must say I have I have worked through I have worked through that in my life. Uh, so I will assume you know I'm getting ready to get my first 752 dollar 
Social Security check coming up on November 24th. In 13 days, I will get my first Social Security check. Uh, $752. You know, I was reading this article. Uh, you know, talking about the average Social Security payment now being over 1600 it's like $1,660 a month is the average Social Security uh, check, uh, you know, and about can you survive, and, then, and if it's two people, I guess it's $3,200 a month. Uh, can you survive on uh, $1,660 a month? Can you survive? It is it was the question. Not not can you have a a full enjoyable life? Can you survive? There is an article uh, in the mainstream media. I've, it's been around for a couple of weeks. I saw it again this morning about how uh, it used to be that uh, you know you wanted to retire with one million dollars available to you but now you know talking about with inflation and all of this stuff that one million dollars no longer cuts it that you need to retire you know at about my age with two million dollars that if you want to have a a uh, happy secure golden years two million dollars uh, in your nest egg good fucking god two million dollars could you imagine having two million dollars if, if I had two million dollars uh, I, I mean, obviously, money would mean nothing to me. Uh, having two million dollars, the new, <clears throat> the new definition of a nest egg: two million dollars. Uh, it's just we we've just you know we're fucked people we're greedy we're lazy greedy uh, panic sheeple uh, it, it's got you know it's gotten completely fucking crazy it's gotten completely fucking crazy we need two million fucking dollars uh, in our nest egg and uh, that sixteen hundred dollars a month. Uh, it, it is like you're, you know, like you're a fucking uh, Ugandan living in a mud hut with 1600 you know, that, that's, that, that's twice the amount of money uh, that I'm making. Over twice the amount of money that I'm making. Uh, can you survive on $1,600? No, you can't if you're a fucking pathetic spirit spoiled brat if you know if you're some little privileged whiny greedy uh, just a you know little spoiled fucking brat uh, I guess you can't survive uh, on sixteen hundred dollars a month you clueless fucking moron uh, and no fucking patience for, for anybody uh, acting like they can't survive on $1,600 a month and need a fucking $2 million nest egg. Jesus Christ, make me want to fucking puke. But anyway, it is a fine day to be rolling down the road. Rolling down the road to my home state of Georgia, baby. I will be back in my home state. Right about dark. And we're off to the Georgia Guidestones tomorrow. There we go. A pilgrimage. My first pilgrimage ever to the Georgia Guidestones. 
So I will be uh, definitely bringing you the first person report from the Georgia Guidestones. Long live the Georgia Guidestones. Get out there and enjoy uh, the Georgia Guidestones. Well, you still can. Bye, guys. Starting to look like the South.